Imagine living in a place where rain is rare and suddenly you're facing record-breaking floods. Dubai's airport was forced to divert incoming flights for around two hours. Officials say there's still significant disruption to flights. How do we address this growing threat and what does this mean for our future? Nearly half of humanity is living in the danger zone now. Today we'll explore why these extreme weather events are becoming more frequent and intense and what we can do about it. There's an 80% increase in fires just over the last year alone. Grab a cup of coffee Sit back and let's explore the critical impacts of climate change together. Why is our planet experiencing these drastic changes? According to the IPCC, human activity has caused rapid warming in the last century, leading to more intense heat waves and rising sea levels. Forecasters say this is just a preview of more extreme weather still to come this summer. First, let's understand what climate change is. Climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. Over the last century, human activities, especially the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas, have released large amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This has caused the planet to warm at an unprecedented rate. Temperature rise could reach or exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius in the next 20 years. Now that is 10 years sooner. In fact, over the last decade, the world was about 1.2 degrees warmer than during the late 19th century. The global temperature increase exceeded 1.5 degrees between February 2023 and January 2024, with 2023 being the warmest year on record. In the words of one leading scientist, we're not doomed, but if we want to avoid catastrophe, we have to drastically cut emissions now. Climate change isn't just an environmental issue. It's become a key topic in our political landscape as we see the impacts of extreme weather events and rising global temperatures, public opinion is shifting. I will not sacrifice tens of millions of jobs, thousands and thousands of companies because of the Paris Accord. 67% of Americans prioritize developing renewable energy over expanding fossil fuels. We're told by all the leading scientists in the world, we don't have much time. We're going to pass the point of no return within the next eight to ten years. This reflects a growing awareness of the need to combat climate change. However, there are significant political divides with Republicans largely supporting fossil fuels and Democrats favoring renewables. Are the scientists right or are they wrong? If they are right, they are telling us that the planet Earth will be five to ten degrees warmer by the end of this century, fair enough. Some political parties, particularly those on the right, often resist the move towards renewable energy due to concerns over economic impacts, such as job losses in traditional energy sectors and increased costs for consumers. You have to show me the scientists because they have a very big political agenda, Leslie. I can't Look, bring them Scientists in. also have a political agenda. In contrast, left-leaning parties generally advocate for renewables emphasizing environmental benefits and long-term sustainability. Transforming our energy system away from fossil fuels uh, and into energy efficiency and sustainable energy. The division creates significant challenges in implementing comprehensive climate policies.
Representatives from more than 160 nations are signing a historic climate agreement now at the United Nations. It aims to limit global warming to below 2 degrees Celsius. The Paris Agreement is a global pact to combat climate change by limiting global temperature rise to well below 2 degrees above pre-industrial levels and pursuing efforts to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees. Each country commits to reducing their greenhouse gas emissions through nationally determined contributions, or NDCs. Developed countries are also expected to provide financial and technical support to developing nations. This helps them mitigate and adapt to climate change impacts. Every five years, there is a global stock take to assess collective progress towards the agreement's goals. Let's look at some of the impacts of climate change. With more than 140 active fires burning in Canada, 40 have been labeled out of control. In the U.S., wildfire smoke has reached states from Montana to Wisconsin. In 2023, Canada experienced its worst wildfire season ever, with over 10 million hectares burned. Higher temperatures and prolonged droughts intensified by climate change have made wildfires more severe and frequent. And it's not just the fires. Up in the Arctic, permafrost is thawing at an alarming rate. This releases greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane, which further accelerate climate change. I've got pictures here of the, that show the mean annual temperature, and you can see basically the blue areas that are on here. These are areas we expect to be permafrosted. This is gradually becoming redder and redder. The thawing also threatens infrastructure on the permafrost, including homes and roads. In 2023, Greece faced devastating forest fires and floods highlighting its vulnerability to climate change. There's a haze of dust across the Athens skyline. The ancient Parthenon temple was temporarily shut to tourists after temperatures hit 42 degrees. Despite this, climate issues were scarcely mentioned in the country's parliamentary elections. Public concern is high with 94% of Greeks believing that tackling climate change should be a priority. However, political action remains limited, with Green parties receiving low support in elections. Environmental journalists in Greece also face threats and legal challenges when reporting on these issues. Heavy rainfall and flooding have hit other parts of the world as well. In June 2024, southern Germany, particularly Baden-Württemberg and Bavaria, faced unprecedented flooding. This is the fourth time this year I visited an area like this, and it's an indication of what's going on. So we can't neglect the task of stopping man-made climate change. In just 24 hours, some areas received more rain than they typically see in a month, leading to dam breaks thousands of evacuations and widespread damage. In Italy, France and Switzerland, fierce storms in June 2024 caused widespread damage, resulting in at least seven fatalities. The storms brought heavy rainfalls, strong winds and severe flooding, disrupting daily life and damaging infrastructure. Similarly, in the UAE and Oman, heavy rains in April 2024 led to significant disruption and fatalities. These regions are typically dry and are not equipped to handle such extreme weather. The Amazon rainforest, often called the lungs of the world, is also under threat. Though fires are common here in Brazil's dry season, climate scientists say this is far from the norm. In 2023, the Amazon experienced the most severe droughts in its recorded history, with rivers dropping to record lows, adversely affecting communities and endangering wildlife. Extreme weather isn't limited to rainfall. Another alarming impact to climate change is the increasing frequency and intensity of heat waves. So how does this affect us on a global scale. Heat waves are another consequence of climate change. 
In recent years, countries like India and Mexico have experienced record-breaking temperatures, causing widespread health issues and fatalities. In Europe, heat waves have also been intense. In 2023, a heat wave in southern Europe led to temperatures soaring above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, impacting daily life and causing numerous health problems. Heat waves are driven by high pressure systems, often called heat domes, which trap hot air and increase temperatures. As climate continues to warm, these events are expected to become more frequent and severe. But it's not just doom and gloom. There are solutions on the horizon. Renewable energy sources like wind and solar have grown rapidly, now supplying about 10% of global energy. This year, the world will spend twice as much on clean energy, including solar, wind and nuclear, as fossil fuels. These sources are crucial for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. However, challenges remain, including intermittency storage and grid integration. Continued investment and innovation are essential to overcome these challenges and increase the share of renewables in our energy mix. 81% of all new capacity on our national grid is going to be solar and storage. And these two technologies go hand in hand. Public support for this transition is strong, reflecting the urgent need for action. In the EU, climate activists reflect on progress and challenges of climate policies amid increasing opposition from some political groups. While progress has been made, activists call for more ambitious targets and actions. You are the change if you are the hope. The green backlash complicates the implementation of robust climate measures, highlighting the need for continued pressure on policymakers. The EU climate strategies serve as a model, but they also show the difficulties of balancing economic, political and environmental priorities. Climate change is driving more frequent and intense extreme weather events globally. While it might be difficult to undo the damage caused by human activities, urgent action is needed to mitigate these impacts. Looking ahead, we can learn from existing examples of effective climate adaptation and build on them for the future. For instance, the Netherlands Delta Works and Room for the River programs are innovative approaches to managing water levels and reducing flood risks. It is a matter of survival. 26% of the country is below sea level. Today, the Netherlands considers itself protected against a 10,000-year storm. Norway electric vehicle policy is another example. The Norwegian parliament has decided on a national goal that all new cars sold by 2025 should be zero emissions. The country has implemented effective economic and social incentives to encourage the adoption of EVs. For instance, electric vehicles in Norway are exempt from purchase tax. Norway has become the world leader in electric mobility, reducing its carbon footprint and setting a benchmark for sustainable transportation. Individual actions matter too. Reducing our carbon footprint by using energy efficient appliances, driving less and supporting renewable energy sources can collectively make a significant difference. Planting trees, 
conserving water and reducing waste are also crucial steps we can all take. I will end the electric vehicle mandate on day one, thereby saving the U.S. auto industry from complete obliteration, which is happening right now, and saving U.S. customers thousands and thousands of dollars per car. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content and be sure to check our other videos too. Leave your comment below. Thanks for watching.